All right, final lesson of the VTM. We've come a long way, and we've we covered. We sure have. Yeah, we've covered a lot of stuff, but in this lesson, we're going to have a look at the camera switcher and the shot track inside of the story window. So what this is going to involve is some time discontinuity, which I explained earlier, but this time you'll actually get to see it in action. And we're going to be bouncing in between the two cameras that we've set up. So basically just switching back and forth, hence the name camera switcher. Makes sense. Yeah, I know. That was profound. But here's basically how this works. I'm going to take a camera. So we'll start off with our first camera that we're going to have. Remember, uh, in our scene, we got this first camera, which just rotates, which is this guy out here. And I'm just going to alt-drag this down here into the shot track in the, uh, the edit area of our story window. And right now, time discontinuity is not on. So you'll see, as I move the clip around, the shot moves as well. So if I right-click inside of story and I activate time discontinuity, look at this. Now as I move the uh -huh. clip... The shot is completely independent. Now it all makes sense. Now I have two. Well, it'll it'll make even more sense as we go along. But right now we have two entirely separate timelines that we're using. So what I'm going to do is make the shot take only the time for that first bit of uh, animation for the camera. So let me close off Ninja Animation. We don't really need it. Let's grab Camera Animation One, and let's take the shot, and I'll just make it end. If you can see this down here at the end of this first bit of animation, like so. Then check this out. Automatically, this clip is this clip. <laughs> this clip is starting to loop over itself. Pardon me, there, a little <laughs> tongue tied. We'll just slide this back so we get one copy of this clip that only includes this first camera. Now let's get our second camera. I'm gonna just grab it, alt drag it down here inside of the shot track as well, and look, I get a second shot. We'll butt this right up against the, the first clip. Now, where is this shot going to start? I want it to start right where our last shot ended. So, right about here. So, right there up against that uh, end of animation. And I need it to go through the end of our ninja's animated sequence. So let's close off camera animation. Let's open up ninja animation. And let's scale down a little bit. And I'll just take this shot and enlarge it all the way to the very end. Now, let's take our clip. Remember, these two are independent of each other. We now need to take our clip and stretch it out, and it will snap right here. You see it? You can just, I mean, you can't feel it because you're not using the mouse, but there is a gentle snap right here at the end of the clip. Now, here's what I'm going to do I'm going to make the camera switcher current. I'm going to rewind my animation and play through it. Let's go to models only, too. So, switch to models only. Let's hit play. Here's camera one. And then, boom, we switch to camera two. And we'll hold on to camera two throughout the entire duration of the animation. So, pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. And we can see him go through his entire kick sequence. We'll hold on just so we can go through the whole bullet time routine. Oh, oh yeah. So, bullet time pan around. And then he lands, and that's the end of the sequence. All right. So here's what I want to do now. I want to kind of show off a little bit. Just to kind of drive the whole idea of time discontinuity home, I'm going to take this second camera. Let me jump back here to my producer perspective again. And let's go back to normal view so I can see my cameras. I'm going to drag this second camera into the shot track a second time. So there's another shot involving this, uh, this camera. And what I'm going to do is make this shot only take place inside the bullet time area of our animation. What I want to do, the end result I'm looking for, is to play the bullet time effect twice. As soon as the animation uh, is over, it's going to click, show the bullet time thing again, and then that'll be it. So let's go ahead and shrink down our clip so it's only one copy of this. Now, I need to take my story mode menu and set it to edit, and also I'm going to take my timeline here, and let's drag it all the way to the end of my animation, like so. And now, let's rewind, and let's play. Remember, if we set this to edit, it's going to play the results of the edit track area. Right. So we'll press play. Let me switch to models only real quick. So go to models only, get the cameras out of the way. So we're playing. Camera switches. Got Ninja Kick 1. I love this. This is just so awesome. Ninja Kick 2. It's so easy. Yeah, it is. Ninja Kick 2, and then Ninja Kick 3 with bullet time. And then watch this. He backs up, and then 
Ninja Kick with Bullet Time again. So there's time discontinuity at its finest right there for you. Very cool. So really, that's everything I want to show in this lesson. So just kind of as a, a recap of the entire VTM, we covered new features for character controls, as far as the hands and feet, new pinning, the reach and pull. We covered the quadruped. We looked at new stuff for the viewer and the cameras. We looked at uh, the new interest selection, if you right-click on a camera. We saw a turntable. We saw how you can flip between uh, orthographic and perspective. Uh, we looked at real-time motion blur, anti-aliasing, and depth of field. Let me go ahead and just play this here in the background. Uh, we saw the new stuff with F-curves. We saw weighted tangents, broken tangents. We saw how we can change the color of the curves. We saw... Oh, it just goes on and on. We uh, covered selecting keying groups and properties. We don't have to select one or the other anymore. We saw various... Uh, the, the new animation menu, which covers plot and options inside of the key controls down here. We've got the uh, tangent types... Uh, the new tangent types for animating. We've got how we can select our tangent types down here inside of our key controls. We've got particle shading that we took a look at. And finally, this massive lesson over the story window. So there's a whole lot of features for Motion Builder 5. I'd like to thank my good friend Joel Van Enwick for helping me out through this VTM. Ain't no problem. Thanks to all of you out there who are using Motion Builder. Thanks to everyone who visits 3D Buzz. Be sure to keep the community thriving. Spread the word about us. And with that... Big thanks to Kedara, and that's the end of this VTM, so thanks a lot, everyone.